Yo, this is Symptom from 210 West Radio. I know you guys hear me five nights a week. Right here, we're doing a live with the new project, Visualize. We're bringing the people to you. Right here, I'm live with Kenny Pigpen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 210 West Radio, live and direct. The streets is talking. The city ain't been the same since they snatched the 39 out the game. So, bro, I want to ask you first and foremost, what part of LA are you from? South Central LA, uh, Crenshaw, Swanson District. Okay. That's what's up. Uh, I noticed that you, a while back, you were by Poppin' LQ. Now you're going by King the King Man. Does everybody out there know what calls the name change? Well, it's not really a, a name change. It's sort of like, you know, a evolve. Okay. You know, so I evolved into King the King Man. You know, Kenny is my government name. Okay. Pop LQ, you know what I'm saying, is still a nickname that I carry, though, in fact. You know okay. We're just more in music right now. The music aspect of the business that I'm building right now is Kenny King. You know okay. I'm a figurehead. You know I'm figure head on this chess board right now. Okay. That's what's you up. Know. You know, you're from South Central Los Angeles. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that you can be involved with. You know, gang banging, sports. But I wanted to know, how did you focus your energies onto the music aspect of it? Well, music run deep in my family. Right. You know, my father had it. My father had an independent uh, gospel label okay. called Plum Line. And uh, his, one of his flagship artists was Daryl Cole. Okay. I think Daryl Cole ended up with a Grammy. Okay. You know, I, see, I'm, I was born in St. Louis, and I was raised out here in South Central LA. So when we migrated out here from the Midwest, my father had a thriving, independent gospel label at the time. I used to work here, you know what I'm saying, wrapping up the labels, uh, boxing up the, the wax, shipping the wax out. So I knew kind of the mechanics of, a, of the functioning of a label. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, my father was, you know, he was heavy into music, man. He was a big influence in that. In fact, my whole family was. Okay. So he came out here already knowing Gerald Busby, uh, Dick Griffin, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, some personal friends of his, you know, some of his business part, you know, colleagues, music business colleagues and whatnot. So as I got older, you know, hip hop struck. Right. I got struck like the rest of us, man. I got hit with the, with that addiction of hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? Here, rock, Kim. You know, the early days, some of the early West Coast stuff like Uncle Jam's Army, Egyptian Lover, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Bobcat, you know what I'm saying? Bobcat is who, I have to credit Bobcat will actually put me in the music business. Okay. He was the cause of me being able to get my first deal when I went under Laquan. Okay. My first deal was with Island, Island Records. Okay. Island Fourth and Broadway. Island Fourth and Broadway to be exact. So I was, you know, luckily to be uh, Uncle Jam's Army baby, which we know the history for those on the West Coast, know the history of Uncle Jam's Army. There was a big club, you know what I'm saying, a big cl club clique of DJs and producers, and um, Egyptian Lover was an independent artist, man. Right. You know what I'm saying, that sound is thriving big today. That, that, a lot of that uh, electronic sound uh -huh. and a lot of stuff you hear comes from the Egyptian Lover old music. You hear it in Will I Am's, Will know that, and he's flipping the hell, Will flipping the hell out of it. So I also want to ask you, what happened with the rap -a -lot situation? Well, the rap -a -lot situation were, it was just a relationship in the business aspect that came to a head of um, time, you know what I'm saying, time. Okay. They were going through a lot of changes in, 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 at rap -a -lot, as well as me going through a lot of changes as an artist and what I want to do with my music. Okay. Coming from the West, you know what I'm saying, we probably didn't give each other enough time to fully gel and get the best out of that situation. But overall, it was a great situation for me because Jay taught me a whole lot about the independent hustle and how to be just more than just an artist. You know what I'm saying? How to be an executive and how to maintain ownership of, of my art. You know what I'm saying? He taught me how to step outside of just being an artist and, and, and be a businessman and look at my art, my music as a commodity. Right. How am I gonna sell this commodity? Right. What moves am I gonna make to add value to this commodity? Right. And he, he approached me like that from the jump. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I, as I as I you know I talked to him here and there, and as I grow as an artist today and as a businessman, I see he was leaning towards me uh, that focusing on that. I fear he said, man, you all right as an artist, you going you gonna go. And I'm gonna make sure you do this business. So that's what I and he opened up a whole region that's south. He showed me that where that money was at in that south. You know what I'm saying? And I'm coming to, I'm coming to get some of that money. Right, right, I want some of that, man. Right, right, you know, that's a lot of money down there, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, they do. They be eating good down there, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get my share, man. I'm, eat, you know? I'm a family member. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You mentioned Rubber Band Ready. Tell a little bit. Who out there a little bit about what Rubber Band Ready is? Rubber Band Ready is a phrase that I coined by being rubber band ready at all times, man. You know what I'm saying? Ready, you got a credit card in your pocket or something, man. You know, be able to do something with yourself, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Financially, man. Right, right, right. That's the first key, you know right. what I'm saying? Rubber band ready, though, is my street album. 
That's the title of Volume One of my street album, hosted by uh, DJ Ill Will and Rockstar. DJ Ill Will. You know what I'm saying? I have some nice, you know, some nice healthy features on there, like G Malone, Topic. Um, I got my man Wink Globe from Back East on there. You know what I'm saying? I got Yuck Mouth. You know what I'm saying? I got Rocket. I got my man Stone Star. You know what I'm saying? Flyboys, Dipset West. You know what I'm saying? So I had some people that I got uh, my man uh, Cousin Capone. You know what I'm saying? Slawson Boys, that's my family, you know what I'm saying? From South Central LA, same neighborhood, Prince Charles Slawson, you know what I'm saying? Palm Tree District. So we, I'm going hard on there. It's just a, it's just a, um, just a catalog of material that I've been building up. I said, hey, you know, let them know where I'm at right now. That's Kenny King, man. You know what I'm saying? They're complete songs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can freestyle, I can rap, but I'm, I'm a songwriter, man. I like coming up with songs. I kind of want to get to that. You know, let the people know how you linked up or even hooked up with the Bay Area and how you kept the relationship throughout these years? Well, my relationship with the Bay Area started, man, in the early 90s. Uh, going up there, there used to be a lot of seminars up there. I used to fly up and being from the West Coast and the Bay is right, you know, right up, right up the street, up north. Right. I developed, uh, I, I have, like my family, you know, even to this day, it's Money B, Shaggy, the whole digital underground family. Pac was with him, Dope. doing shows, and, and, and Shock used to always inspire me, man, and tell me, man, you got it. You <laughs> gifted, man, you know what I'm saying? Get your show them shit together, you know? He used to be on me about making sure I took care of my business. Okay. Mind you, I was like 15, 16. Oh, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? He, he's seen enough in me to even share that wisdom with me. And I used to see how they used to go on the road. They would me come on a live show, Digital Underground, man. They was coming with it. It was like a, a young before. parliament out there, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Shock and, and Money being all in. I, I, I met Yuck and it when they started bubbling, like right before they started bubbling with the five on it. Okay. And me and Yuck clicked. You know, ironically at the time, Yuck was married to like one of my homegirls who I grew up with. Okay. Trina, that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, and then, and, and, uh, so, you know, we had all, it was like me going through Rap Live, which was going through Virgin at the time, and they had a deal with Virgin at the time too. We, we you know what I'm saying? We already had close ties, but we, we, we bonded creatively more. Right. And then I had, you know what I'm saying, through that, so I introduced Yuck to Bosco who's from Portland originally, but did a lot of Bay Area stuff, a lot of stuff with E-40. And Yuck, you know what I'm saying, kind of bridged the gap between Bosco and 40. So that whole Bay Area family, that's my family, man. Like, this is a trip, because a lot of time I'm up in the Bay, they like, town business. I'm like, you know, I'm from L.A., man. <laughs> yeah. They be like, what are we thinking? You come over. Right I'm like, nah, right. this is just my second home, right. you know what I'm saying? I navigate through here, you know what I'm saying? I get a lot of love, and I reciprocate that love, man. Because right. all of my guys up there that I fuck with, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, 40, you know, the whole, the whole sick with the family. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? They, they show me a lot of love, so I reciprocate that, man. You know what I'm saying? That's my family, man. Right. Plus, they got that independent grind, you know? Right. Yeah, you can't, man, that's one thing you can say about the Bay Area, man. They are all they hustle when it comes to their material and, and, and what they push. They're not playing about that, you know what I'm saying? The product is a product, man, to a hustle. Yeah, so you know we got we, we have to learn something. Us in here in LA, we can learn something from that. So it's been a while since the streets have heard from you. Mm -hmm. uh, where you been at? You know where you been at for the last <laughs> you know, few months? What's up? What's up with you? Where you been at? Well, currently I'm in a, a federal halfway house facility. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm in on a, a, a violation of a few different things. You know what I'm saying? With, with, you know which I'm, I'm dealing with. And luckily, uh, I just finished. I'm at the last 36 days right now of finishing a, a five-year. Uh, Probation. See, when you when you have a federal case, when you get out, it's not probation or parole. They have what you call supervised release. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Anybody coming home from the feds and they get out to have a house, it's supervised release. It's not really probation, but it, it acts as, in if, a, as if it's like a probation. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're still serving so, your time. Right? Yeah, so I, I'm off of that in April. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm in a halfway house now. They gave me 120 days in a halfway house on some violation, not reporting some traffic tickets and whatnot. And stuff like that, something minor. Okay. And I'm finishing that up. So that's what I've been dealing with. Last year I had to do 10 months because I had some dirty tests. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a cannabis advocate. You know what I'm saying? Word up, word up. <laughs> I'm a cannabis advocate. You know what I'm saying? Up, I, so up, I like that Kush. Yes, got sir. me in trouble, and I had to go sit down for it. Okay. So I was at Terminal Island, for, you know, correctional for you know, federal yeah. correctional facility yeah. in San Pedro. And uh, I had to walk the yard there, and I came up with some nice music. I used the opportunity to, you know, really get into my music and, and go back and, and dig in my heart and write in and share my personal experience and my observation. You know what I'm saying? And I, which I feel like that's that's the kind of artist I am, a reflective artist. Anything I'm going through, whatever life throws me, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna convert it and, 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 and make art out of it. 
coming out. That's my job. So yeah. after these 36 days, you're done with that. I'm done, done with that episode in life. I'm dropping this rubber band ready. Yeah. I'm going hard. I'm gonna be doing shows. I'm gonna be doing features, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to get some personal things with me to go as far as getting in trouble. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because faith, faith is a real thing, man. And your faith will be tested. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I say that for all up and coming artists. You know what I'm saying? Faith is the evidence of something that's not seen and the substance of substance of something that's hoped for. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that you won't, you won't be able to see presently that's right in front of you, right. but that don't mean you don't keep your focus right. beyond of what's in, you know what I'm saying? The whole thing is being able to see beyond your present condition. That's what faith is, you know what I'm saying? That's important for an artist or any business person. Anytime you're trying to build something from the ground up with no handouts, or following nobody's coattail, or sucking nobody's dick, or licking, kissing nobody's ass. We're gonna keep it raw. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have to be able to see and have vision to see beyond your present condition. Right. I, I was, I failed at a certain time in that, and I, I turned to the streets, and I was getting money. I, I was getting a lot of money, but I, I got in trouble behind it too. You know what I'm saying? We, we got the snitch factor. It's a real deal out here. Really. I want to talk to you a little bit about getting radio play uh, in LA and California. And I'm asking you that because, as you know, I had a 210 West radio program. We started that kind of to rebel against, you know, the Power 106s and the, the beats and the K-Days to get our music heard and to get everyone else's music out here heard. What's your opinion on radio play and, and the difficulties of getting radio play right here in Los Angeles? Right now? Well, as an artist and a businessman, I don't think it should be as difficult as it is. Right. And I think the radio probably, here in L.A., radio probably need to get a little bit more in tune to the streets. But then again, for business sake, they probably don't want to because I don't really know, right there, I don't think, I don't know their agenda. Radio's agenda is not really transparent other than what they plan and we saying, okay, this is what they own. Right. But it should never be in a position where artists have to really force themselves to perform to one particular format. Right. No, right. no, no matter what it is. Like, it shouldn't just be what all local stuff but local your local backyard yard needs to be heard more it has to be it, it has to be heard more you know what i'm saying how you know what i'm saying how you gonna say you represent the city if you're not hearing the, the, the full representation but the problem can be with la in particular is so diversified right. you know what i'm saying our, our 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 reality here is diversification man you know what I'm saying? that's what la is about though so we got to remember that at the same time so i don't know you know bridging the gap between the actual people far as the artists and and, and 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 the listeners because all the all, all the artists are listeners too right you know what i'm saying right so you know saying that building that relationship it can be strengthened up and that's something we all got to take part in the artists you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. the executives we need more executives we need more people who can who can sh have that common barrier between the radio stations right and the artists right so we lacking again go back to what we've been chopping it up earlier about it's we lacking industry out here man mm -hmm. Period. It's not just, oh, the artist is not getting on. There's not enough representation for the artists. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's not enough people to say, hey, man, this, this dude is hot. He's speaking what's going on, what the people's on to. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's widening more and more, but it's a lack of communication. So as a result of that, you're hearing a lot of good artists, and we're like, man, this man needs to be heard. Man, this right. man pushing his music. Right. This stuff is right. He got his stuff together. It's professional. You know, how, you know, how come we can't hear this? We banging it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what gets me the most. When I hear the streets playing music, I'm talking about presentable music that can be that can pass the FCC laws. Mm -hmm. Like, why I'm not hearing this on the radio? Right. We run everybody running around here banging this in the club. Right, right, took right. him forever to play. Tooted right. and booted by YG. It's taking it took him forever to play to get on the Joe Moses. Right. I mean, you know, we've been banging it. This this, this been this been banging, man. Right. You riding around, people hearing this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know, radio hasn't. It's not really in tune with the streets. Like it should be. That's just the, you know, now I'm not saying nothing can't be done about it, but I'm saying something needs to be done about it. Right. That's my take on it. Yo, now what it is, is Two Stan West presents Visualize. Here with your boy Kenny Keith. They want to thank you for coming in now. Thanks for having me, man. Thank for you really. for being on the show also at the same time and also helping me out with this project right here. I appreciate that. No, it's a good, this project, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, you know, I yeah. cut you off, but I just want to commend you for what you're doing in your work, taking initiative, not only to get your own self heard, but just creating a platform for us as artists. Period, man. So, you know what I'm saying? And to me, and a lot of cats are complaining about the, the current state of the music industry and the current state of the West Coast trying to come back. Right. They're not really doing nothing about it. They, they're right. whining like babies. Right. You grind. Right. So I'm a solution on that. Appreciate man. that, man. That's what it's about. Two Team West, man.